today I'll be doing a quick guide. This is the ASUS TS Mini, which I unboxed a little while back. It's a home server unit from ASUS. It accepts two hard drives, but the one that I have comes by default with one 500 gig drive. So this is going to be a drive, or well, drive, drive installation or a storage upgrade tip today. So we're going to start by removing the casing. So I just undo these two thumb screws at the back here. One and two. The whole process is quite simple. I've already scoped it out even though I haven't actually installed a drive in it just yet. The case slides off just like, well it slides off just like this. Okay, so you just get a good grip on it there. Slide it off. All right, from here you need to remove only three screws and it would really help if I had the right bit in my screwdriver here. So I'm just gonna dump the bits out. Put in my slot head. There we go. So just do this one up here. They are magnetic screws, which is good news because I also have a magnetic screwdriver. So that makes it easier to keep track of them once you've taken them out. Remove the second one. And then the third one is down here. And then you actually slide out almost the entire internal guts of the TS Mini. Now the reason that I am doing a hard drive installation video before I actually do any tips about home server or the TS Mini itself is that home server is not terribly useful unless you've got multiple hard drives because a big, I mean there's a bunch of stuff it does but it's from my perspective it doesn't really matter if you, uh, if you don't have the data security that it can also provide for you. So here I have a hard drive. This is a 500 gig drive to go with the 500 gig drive that is already installed in the TS Mini. And um, so you just grab your accessory box, which I happen to conveniently have here. There's my user's guide. There's a bunch of other stuff. And here are the screws that I will use to install this drive. So just put those there. Oh, okay, these are uh, slot as well. I had just kind of assumed that they would be Phillips head since I've seen very, very few hard drives in my time that are mounted with uh, slot head screws. So there you go. You see something new every day. So slot head screws are not really my favorite. They're a little harder to maneuver into place than Phillips head. So bear with me here while I try to do this with a camera strapped to my chest. You've got to put six of these on or at least four. So this may take a while. There we go. I got one, although it's not in all the way yet. So hard to line up. Always slips out of the way. I don't know how people do it. Like there's entire industries that seem to use nothing but slot head screwdriver or screws. It's a pretty useless standard if you ask me. There's nothing that you can do with a slot that you can't do with a Robertson or a Phillips. I mean, I guess if you need a whole ton of torque, then slot head's probably the only way to go. But I can't think of all that many applications where you'd need that much torque. Okay, I'm just gonna have to like turn this off for a bit and <laughs> struggle with this off camera. Alright, I got it. That really wasn't that hard when I'm not trying to hold a camera at the same time. So uh, I made it look very difficult, but it isn't. So then all you do is you slide the drive in. You see there is a SATA backplane there, which runs off a PCI Express 1X interface right here. And I'll show you how that fits into the TS Mini itself. But basically all you do is line up these screws with the rails that are in there and then drop it in. So this lever right here lifts up if you want to take the drive out and then it just lifts itself up and then locks right into place when you screw the when you uh, slide the drive in. So now I have two hard drives plugged into this uh, this back plane here and I'm ready to put it back in but I wanted to give you guys a look at the inside of the TS Mini. One of the things to note about the TS Mini is there are not any warranty void if removed stickers when you take the thing apart. So it is designed to be opened up by an end user and have uh, hardware installed in it, so that's really good. So here's a custom motherboard. This is the ASUS TS Mini MB WS, so I guess that's their workstation series. And uh, we've got our Atom processor here, a chipset. We have a PCIe 1X interface that I mentioned before, and then we have a whole lot of connectivity here on the back. So we've got all six of those USB ports, two eSATA ports, Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Well, I'll be. Look at that. The TS Mini has a VGA port, but 
it's not accessible from the back. So I, I, hold on a minute. We are discovering things today. So let me see. There's uh, I see there's got to be a way to remove this uh, this back plastic piece. So here, okay, we're we're getting sidetracked today. I'm apologizing in advance for that, but it's something that has to be done. We're gonna go ahead and remove these. These are Phillips head, yay! So that'll go much faster. See, look, I can do Phillips head with a camera strapped to myself all day. All right, so one, two, three, three of those. And let's see what happens if we take this off. Do we get access to that VGA port? Does the whole thing slide? The whole thing slides off and we still don't have access to the VGA port. Okay, well maybe there's uh, some other trick involved here that I am that is not readily apparent to me. Let me just see. Oh, I see there are more screws somewhere, but I don't see how those help us. Let's see what happens if we push on this. Push this thing. No, no, that doesn't help. Interesting. So I, I, I guess in theory you could you could cut this away and get access to it, but I yeah, the plastic is thin over top of where the VGA port is, but you can't actually get at it. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, well, I guess if you were desperate, if you absolutely needed to get access to the home server from uh, from like a physical display, then then that would work. But I mean, it is meant to be managed completely remotely anyway, so it's not like it would be a concern for 99.99% of situations. But uh, there you have it. If you were really that desperate, you could just rip this open and you could plug in a VGA port. Yeah, you can hear that. So this black thing is probably almost just a sticker. You can see it sticking onto the port there. Behind it. Huh, interesting. Okay, well anyway, so when you slide the now full of drives enclosure thing back in, you just line up the PCIe interface with the PCIe slot inside, like this, and then you just slide that in. So it only goes in one way. There you go. Then you put your three screws back, and these are slot again, so we'll see how this goes. I actually found it was a little bit easier to thread them in by hand because they do have ridges on the edges of them and then tighten them with the screwdriver. So that might be the strategy that we use here. So yeah, anyway, without the redundancy feature where it uh, automatically backs up your data, I don't believe home server is all that useful. So pretty much the first thing you should do if you're not buying a home server unit that already has two hard drives in it is you should probably grab another hard drive for it. I mean, hard drives are so cheap these days, it's hardly even a, it's hardly even a factor when you consider the data security that's at, uh, that's at stake. So there you have it. That is how to upgrade your hard drive in the ASUS TS Mini. Oh, I didn't even notice this. Look at this. This is actually see-through. You can see my hand through. So it's not actually solid black. I had no idea. We are learning all kinds of things on my video blog today. The unit gets quite a bit heavier once you've installed an additional hard drive in it as well. So thank you for checking out my guide on upgrading the ASUS TS Mini home server to include a second hard drive.